Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm recording this improvised video because I just saw a proposal made on Swift Evolution about one of the most exciting features I've been waiting for Swift for a long time. Bear in mind that this is still not accepted, as I'm recording this, the proposal, it's just started, so people is reviewing it and commenting it, there are some things that are not ideal, so maybe at the end of the day we still don't get this feature, but it's something that I've been waiting for Swift to have it for a long time, and I think this incarnation of it is really nice, so I'm sure that if we don't have exactly this one, we're gonna have one soon, and it's super cool. So the feature I'm going to be talking about is property delegates. Property delegates, it's kind of a rename for a conversation that has been happening in Swift Evolution for literally years before the Swift forums when we were on the evolution list. That's where everything started. It was previously called uh, property behaviors and they, they were a little more powerful than the current version. But the whole point and the whole idea is that we have common patterns that when we describe properties or basically storage for variables that we want to repeat over and over. One of the common scenarios is lazy variables. So it's those scenarios where you have a variable, but de depending on the use case and depending on the on how the class performs and behaves, you maybe don't need it. Usually what we do is we do a number formatter and we create it and that's pretty much it. So this lazy modifier is basically encapsulating a behavior that modifies how the property works. The property by default is just a storage in memory and with something special for the deed set and, and all that stuff. And then you can make computer properties. So there is a lot of these behaviors, but basically the lazy, the lazy keyword here makes this don't run an initialization time and it only runs the first time it's accessed. And after that, it's stored in memories. The other times that you access it, it's basically for free. Now, wouldn't it be cool if we could have this at user level code? So nothing that it was not special for the compiler. So this is what property delegates give. To take a look at a simple example, so you can see how this works, we can have a look at this Xcode project that I have that has the, the tool chain with this implementation of the, the property delegates available. And basically I have here some class with a normal store property that is a, an integer, nothing special. And then I just create this, this something class. I change the number and I print it. So as you can see, there is nothing special going on here. I just print five because five is what I'm putting. So what if now we say, wouldn't it be cool if every time the the properties get or it's set we actually want to print to console like this is a super simple example it's nothing that you will do actually usually in production but imagine that instead of printing to the console you want to log it to some login system imagine like something like that so we can open here and we can say okay yeah because if it's super cool we have the did set and we can do print and setting And as you can see, when we call the setter on number, we get the setting and the five. And that's cool, but there are two issues. First, we don't have an easy way to get the the every time that it's the get is called, which means that instead of this, what we will have to do is actually make the real number uh, a private variable that stores the int, for example, and this is a three. And then instead of making this uh, actually store property, we need to make this a computer property that returns. There you go. Now we have setting five, getting five, and the print from five that I do manually. So as you can see, doing this kind of behavior, Swift helps us a little bit with this did set. It has, for example, the lazy. So there are some things that Swift has by default but it doesn't have everything like this printing behavior, which you could say maybe not this incarnation of it, but maybe something smarter, it would be really useful to have. So it doesn't have that. And then it means that we need to do all these dance on every time that we want to use it. Of course, there is other ways that it's basically making wrapper types. So imagine that we have a printer type and we put this logic in there and then we put 
uh, or variables inside that type. That basically will mean that the usage code, so instead of saying s number, I will have to do the number is actually another type and I will have to look at the value. And that's not really nice and that makes polluting code a lot of pollution on your code base and you don't really want that. The alternative, thanks to this proposal, it's literally implementing the like this printer behavior in actually a property delegate. It's called a property delegate, but in my opinion, the property behavior's name, it's, it's nicer, I think. It avoids any confusion between a uh, UI table view delegate thing, which obviously they are both delegate patterns in the basic sense, but I think that kind of a little uh, fuzzy, what's the difference? And this is literally just some annotations that you can put, so it's not the same as a pro uh, delegate view delegate. Anyway, Thanks to this magic, now I can put here printer, and as you can see, Xcode even detects that this is a proper annotation. And if I run this, it basically tells me that there is no initializers because I need to give it an initial value. So let's give an initial value of two. And now, automatically, with just adding this code, I recovered all this setting two with five, getting five, and the normal print. And as you can see, I don't have to make any computer property with a backing storage. I don't need to make uh, using a wrapper type. This is literally uh, an integer. If you check here, this is an integer. So you have everything from an integer available. So I can add both and you can see. So I'm getting it twice and then, so like this is just a normal property with your normal types. There is no wrappers involved here, but actually the magic is on this printer annotation. The way it, this proposal talks about it is making a type, it can be a struct, it can be a final class, doesn't matter, a type that it's generic over some value, which is the value of the property, making a type that is generic over some other type, in this, in this case I call it value. This value type is the actual type from the property, so in this case that value represents this integer type here. The only thing you need to do then is add this annotation. This is a compiler annotation. It's a property delegate. It indicates the compiler that this type is intended to be used as a property delegate. And then there are kind of some other requirements that you need to implement that if you don't do it, the compiler kind of guides you. Still, I think that this tool chain needs some little improvements in terms of some compiler errors and stuff like that because I've had uh, some issues with it. You need is two things. First, you need to provide a, a value property, which is what it's going to be accessed for the get and set every time that the, the real property is accessed. So in this case, as you can see, I'm basically re-implementing what I showed you that I was doing uh, ad hoc on the, on, the, on the other code. And here instead, I have it on this type. So every time I get this call, I print it. Every time I set this call, I print it and just I just store it on this internal property. The other thing that you need to do is this special initializer. The compiler is expecting to have an initializer with this form initial value and the type that the, the property, the real property is using. And this is basically so you can do this. So this here, it's actually getting rewritten by the compiler into the same code that we had before. It's just that this equals two is actually calling the initializer with the initial value. And apart from that, there you have it. There is not much to it. So you could imagine that just with this, you could do so many things. And one thing I love about the proposal is that it shows a lot of examples that we could be building with this. The property delegate can have extra properties, uh, kind of configuration, and you can pass other, other parameters to it. And you can do this just by declaring properties. And that's what I like about this design, which is like it's use, using common Swift types. There is no special things about it. As long as you, it's basically like conforming to a protocol. As long as you have an initial value and you have this value property here, then you can just use normal Swift stuff, day-to-day -day things that you are pretty much used to it. So with this, I was saying, okay, let's add a prefix. But of course, when you have this, then the initial value initializer, it doesn't work with this anymore. If I use printer two here, then the compiler is going to tell me, oh, I need the initial value initializer because otherwise I don't know what to do. And it's fair enough because the initializer is expecting more things that it's not available here. This is one of the pitfalls I have with this with this proposal is that now 
I'm forced to do this in it here and then I can use the prefix. So as you can see, I'm still using test setting. I, I haven't put it here, but I should have. But then you can see how the symmetry is broken. How now I can no longer use my normal Swift stuff. I need to move the initial value here to here. I would love if the if there was a little bit more magic and I could still do this. Don't pass this here and then the compiler will figure out that none needs to go on the second parameter because it's an initial value has the same type. I think it could be done, but of course not a compiler expert, so I don't know how the design of the language will work around this. But this is one of the pitfalls that I, I wish uh, we could have like a little more a better version of this. Another example, which is the, the initial one that we started talking about, the lazy that it's a part of the compiler, how we could extract that and the proposal shows the way to do it. It's not exactly the same, the same functionality because the, the compiler allows to reference self inside the, the lazy the lazy closure, for example, but it's a future direction that could be fixed. So it's not exactly, don't take this as, is, yeah, we can do it just straight away. There is a little more work to be done, but pretty interesting. And it will allow me to show you another little feature of, of the property delegates. So as before, we have the number formatter here, but of course we don't want to actually create it because if I do this, I don't actually execute it. I'm basically creating these and wasting performance and, and memory for something that is not useful. So to fix this, we have a lazy property delegate. I still think property behavior is better, eh? but then this automatically mimics the behavior of a lazy property until I don't call this, it's not created. You will ask, how, how do you know that? Like, I mean, I don't see how this changes anything for uh, this could be empty and you will not know. So this lets me show you a new f uh, feature of these property delegates. The compiler, when basically is rewriting all of this into what the code I showed you before, it's a computer property with uh, another property that serves as a storage that has a different name, so you don't want to access it. So when you do S formatter, then yeah, as you can see when the, the auto suggestion shows it up because it's it's implemented in such a way that like actually the compiler and source kit on all these layers they know about it. The trick here is that the compiler is creating this dollar formatter uh, variable, which is the one with the with the property delegate, which is the one that serves as the storage. So this means that we can, we can actually access the lazy struct itself, which in this case we can access the lazy type itself and we can, for example, print it. So you can see that it's correct that the formatter is not being initialized. As you can see, this is not initialized. And if I do it after, you will see how it is then initialized. You can see just for the sake of showing you it's on the proposal, but uh, this lazy implementation is basically an enum with an initialized and initialized case. And the trick here is that when you create it, I'm basically using an auto closure, which means that this code is not executed until you want to execute it. And that's it for the lazy. As you can see, it's not that much. It's of course, it doesn't have everything, as I said before, but that's a pretty common implementation that looks really nice. And another good example the proposal shows is this property delegate that allows you to make properties bake automatically by something like NS user defaults, which is really nice. For example, this, you could see this being used in, in application because it removes a lot of boilerplate already. So this is the code copy pasted from the proposal. There is some issue, like the compiler doesn't, doesn't really do it, but that's how it should work. But you can literally see how you can make a, a static variable that you can access and you can modify as any other static variable you will do. You can set a new value, get the, get the value, and then you say which key should be represented. And I could imagine even making this a little smarter and just uh, deducing the key from the property name directly. And then you can see how the user default property delegate, it's nothing special. It's just, again, re-implementing the get and the set. And instead of storing it in a variable, like I was doing before, it just setting it on the user standard default. That's it. So the next example from the proposal, it's one that I think is really interesting to take a look. And it is something that if you have worked with Kotlin, you actually will know that they have a property delegate of a modifier on the properties that we don't have. So 
We have lazy and that's fine, it allows you to delay the initialization of the property, but you need to give it, uh, the compiler needs to have something to initialize it for. So it's not actually like you can just leave it like this and then magically it have it, no. The compiler as you can see here is telling me, well it has no initializers because it's expecting me to have a value for this at initialization time. And this is one of the safety features of Swift, which is definite initialization. And that's really important to make your code right. But as we all know, sometimes we don't have the values at initialization time. Storyboards is a great example, but there are other scenarios with that not having the value at initialization point is actually legit. And you know that just before any other color runs, you will have it. On Swift, the only solution we have is mark this as an implicit and wrap optional. So the compiler doesn't complain anymore because it can set nil in the beginning and then when you need it, you you must ensure that the value was there, otherwise you will have a crash at runtime. But still, it's not that an elegant solution because they are not really ideal for that. The other solution is obviously putting an optional, but that then makes all your code super ugly because you need to unwrap this everywhere. Even if you know that it's like, no, like the only issue is that I don't have it on the init, but anywhere else I will have it. So it's actually not a nice solution. Called in offers is one thing they call late init. The proposal calls this the late mutable and the late immutable. They have two variants, one that you can modify later and one that you, you cannot. If you know called in, I call this late init. As you can see now, the compare doesn't complain anymore. So if I bring some code from the proposal, you can see that at any time we don't know X. And that's not something that you can do on Swift unless you rely on those, on those magic things. But then, we initialize it once, then you get it. I can actually create the instance of this class here. I must first initialize it with four, and then I can get the the act. And as you can see, this the compiler one. It doesn't complain that the that at this point x doesn't have any value, and then I can choose x as it is. And then the tricky thing here is that this still behaves in an unsafe mode. You are just delaying these rules at runtime, but the rules are still there. If I call this before initializing it, that will still crash my program. So again, it's not something that you want to use every day, but it's something that for those scenarios, it's really nice because it makes it really clear that this property is going to be initialized. It's going to be there when you need it, but it's just going to be after the init. Furthermore, the thing is that because this is immutable, you can even enforce that it's not set twice. Okay? And this is ideal because that's pretty much, we could replace any usages of storyboard properties with this and it will be more clear and it will be not safer because you still can create runtime, but at least clear and the, and the developer will know, yes, I shouldn't be touching this because it's a late init property and I cannot touch it. So as you can see, we have been able to improve the language, move something that another language had, like Colin has this late init concept. We have been able to put it in Swift just as a user code, like the code is basically here. It, there is not much to it. You just crash at runtime if something wrong happens. That's what literally what Colin does. There is nothing special about it. So. It's really nice that we can expand the language yourself and, and when you see a feature that allows these kind of things, you know this feature is really powerful. And I think that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. I just wanted to raise that this is happening, that is really exciting, that you should take a look. You should maybe install this toolchain and, and get some opinions about it and go to the forums and, and get your views in there. The proposal, as you can see, is really well written. It has many examples. And then it's really interesting because it shows you how we already have some types that we use to wrap other other objects in and then we use them directly, but it's like this could be abstracted away into a property delegate. Some interesting points about the design that I want to raise is like type inference. As you can see, like I was, I was like option clicking and you will see the types type inference work as expected. Uh, the custom attributes is really interesting because the fact that we're using an attribute here, it's pretty much in line with this other pitch, this other conversation that is happening, which is about introducing custom attributes for the user. That's another conversation, but still it's nice that this proposal aligns the, the fact that it's using a, a user-defined attribute to, to make this work. And then there is this whole section about mutability, which is really nice because it actually 
lets the compiler know how, how you can mutate or not a property that is back by a, by a property delegate. And it's all based on concepts that we already know. You can make a mutating get, you can make a non-mutating set. So all of this is transmitted into the, the real properties and the compiler knows about it, which is really nice. The dollar identifier, there is some comments on the thread that people don't like this. I think it's quite nice that we're using this dollar identifier because it reminds me of the dollar zero on closures. You know that that dollar zero is there. I haven't written it. It's just magically done by the compiler and I can use it. So for me, this dollar X is the same. I haven't written it, but the compiler has done it and I can access it. So for me, it's a nice symmetry that makes the language uh, easier to understand. Kotlin has this syntax where you can do by user default. So instead of using an attribute, you can use this. This, I really don't mind. I don't care. I, I like the attribute and that's fine. The thing is that Kotlin, by using this, it has a nice syntax for some of these aspects because I haven't been able to make a parameter that it's a closure. But if you think about it, putting the closure on the attribute, that feels ugly, really ugly. I don't know if that's what is expected. But then you can see here, for example, the observable example from coding that you can do by delegate observable. And this is like a trailing closure and bam, you write this here. And it's literally the same code that we do when we make a computed property, when we make a did set, all that stuff. So I think I don't really care about this that much, to be honest, I'm fine putting this above. But the fact that you can do this with this syntax is really nice. If you are really interested in this, I recommend you to take a look at the property behaviors, which is the previous version of it. Here, it shows the differences between them. It was a little more powerful because I think if, if I remember correctly, that it added things like you could actually make the did change syntax. You could actually implement that at user level. Imagine that we could like make the observable example make it really nice. That's it for this video. I'm really excited about this feature, this feature and a couple others that will make uh, Swift more customizable and more powerful in the in this sense. Uh, there is some other features that I really expect the language to get eventually. Everybody has one of these features, but I think I wanted to talk about this one because it's one of these ones that, unless you really like programming languages and you try other pro other languages, which in this case, Colden is a, it's pretty, it's pretty it's well used, so people knows about it. But there are some of these features that are really useful, but until they are not presented to you, you don't know that you even needed it. I personally like share this with the community. So that's why I do this kind of video because I want the community to know about this. I want you to know about it because it's really interesting. And if you are still on the time where the proposal is open, go there and comment and share it with the community. And honestly, if you think this is interesting and important, please like the video and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you next time.